Hello my lovely Floss Tube friends and welcome back to the channel. A very warm welcome to you all. It is a lovely Tuesday morning here. It's lovely and cool here in the UK and I thought I'm going to sit here and do an hour of stitching before I start work because I have the privilege this Tuesday morning to work from home. So I decided that I would, yeah, get a wiggle on with some stitching because it's been so hot here I've not really been able to do that much stitching because it's too hot to be indoors. However, that said, as you can see, I am working on a new project. Um, I purchased this when I was at the Wrexham Retreat at the Nimble Thimble. This is the Shepherd's Bush Roberts Stocking. And I have to say, I am thoroughly enjoying myself. It is so refreshing to stitch on something else. This, hopefully, providing the pace keeps up, will be a stocking for my boss's retirement in November. And yeah, I, I can't even begin to tell you how much fun I'm having with this project. Basically, since I got this out and put the first cross in it, I just, yeah, I can't even bring myself to switch out. Let me share with you where we've got to. I'm not going to share too much because I'll share with you on my monthly update. It is so refreshing to work on something like this. It's totally new to me. It's never something I've done before. Um, and I'm stitching this on an 18 can natural linen, which, well, look at the size of these holes. Look at the size of those holes. They are like the nicest looking holes in the world. So, like I say, I have been sort of on a mission with this because it's just, I, I got it out and was thinking, well, you know, I'll do a little bit and then, then I'll get out all of my stuff for whip go and start working on whip go for the month. And yeah, I can't begin to tell you. It is a miserable foul on the whip go. In fact, it's a miserable foul on anything other than this because I'm having an absolute blast with this one. So much so that I just don't want to put it down. Really don't want to put it down, it's that bad. Literally, since I've got this one out and started stitching on this, I've stitched on nothing else. And the ease of being able to stitch on something like this is heavenly. Absolutely heavenly. The holes are so big. I'm loving working with the pearl cotton. It's stitching up much, much faster than I thought it would. Because at first I was thinking, oh, I think this might take me a little while because it's, it's not something I'm used to. It's something completely different. But it's, it's the complete opposite. The complete opposite. Now, I know you can see two little holes there. That's because I ran out of the green thread um, on the last strand and I, I'm, I'm just being lazy to put this in. I'm rather hoping that there's somewhere else on the chart that uses the green. And then when I've got like just a little bit left, I'll go back and finish those bits. So that's not supposed to be there, but I didn't want to pull a whole thread length just to stitch those two little stitches there. So yeah, I thought I'll go back and do that bit. But this process of stitching on something this big is divine. I've stitched it on the train. It was so easy on the train. I've stitched it in the evenings when I've been outside because it's been so hot here in the UK. I say so hot. Not in comparison to our American and Australian friends, but for the UK, considering that probably 80% of the population does not own any type of aircon. Um, Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember which day, we got up to 32 degrees here. But it was 32 degrees and it was, the humidity level was, yeah, it was, it was hot, people. Um, and it didn't matter whether you sat in the shade or whether you sat in the sun. If you were sitting in the sun, then you, you was melting. But even in the shade, it was like, wow. Wow, this is hot. <laughs> very, very hot. So, needless to say, through the day, it's been a little bit too warm. But even for me, unusually... Now, what, what tends to happen for me in the summer is, if, if it's really hot, Although I have all these really good intentions, and I say I could go and stay, I could go and sit outside and do a spot of stitching, but most of the things that I stitch on are small accounts. 
So then I always run into the problem of I need some sort of light out there. I can't really see what I'm doing. So I tend to find that I either just sit there and watch YouTube or I end up doing some gardening. With this, it's totally different because it's so big. Even when the, even when the sun's going down and you're losing the light, you can still see the holes because they're that big. I mean, it's like a dartboard. You could, you could throw the needle at it and not go wrong, she says. Famous last words. I best not say that, not on a video, because the likelihoods are something will go wrong. But you get you get what I mean. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a joy. It is an absolute joy. And I'm thoroughly enjoying working with the pearl cottons. Admittedly, I do work with rather long threads, even for pearl cotton. But that's just that's just me i'm not i'm not a lover of having to keep rethreading the needle and on something like this i mean if if my threads were any less than they are i would be forever doing like three stitches and then i would have to rethread the needle because when i first cuz before i actually cut the skein down cuz this pearl cotton comes as a skein and before I cut the stain, the skein down properly to hang it onto my thread drops, I sort of cut a section just to get the first bit in. And I think I cut it sort of to the same length that I would if I was doing a single strand of, of DMC. And I think I got, I don't know, maybe five or six stitches out of it. And I was like, yeah, no, we need longer lengths because the stitches are just so big so so big in comparison to what I'm used to so for me I'm I've cut my lengths really quite long but I rather like it I know that people say you have to be a bit more careful with the pearl because it's got the twist in it so let me show you what I mean so you can see the twist in the thread there and basically they say if you cut the length too long slowly but surely you start to lose the twist and if you lose the twist you start to lose the shine from the thread I haven't found that personally I think sometimes that can be very much dependent on how you stitch but for me it doesn't seem to be being a problem so it has been so much fun and I've even took this upstairs and actually stitched this while I'm laying in bed. So I have all these good intentions. I always say this. It's like, yeah, well, if I put a project up in the bedroom, then I can sit and stitch in bed. But nine times out of ten, I might be put five or six stitches in and then that's it. Because normally my eyes are struggling to see or, yeah, it's just not such an enjoyable process. But because this, with the holes being as big as they are, and the thread being nice and chunky, you can do a strand or two and really sort of, you know, get quite a lot of coverage done as far as how many stitches you actually got in. Whereas if I do a thread or two of normal DMC on, I don't know, a 28 count, a 32 count or a 36 count, it sort of, it looks like I haven't really done anything. So yeah, I'm absolutely loving this process and loving stitching on it I've, I've been obsessed I mean I'm, I'm, I'm not a monogamous stitcher and I can honestly say I have basically monogamously stitched on this I mean I'm dreading looking at my excel spreadsheet because I don't think I don't think I've stitched on anything else in June I really don't. I mean, it has been a busy month. And as per usual, you know, if nothing, I'm consistent when it comes to the summer weather. When the summer weather comes, my stitching reduces to negligible. I mean, in, in years gone by, there have been times that in June and July, I've basically stitched maybe two or three days because I'm either in the garden, busy in the garden, or I'm doing housework, or I'm having barbecues, or I'm doing family type stuff, and 
I don't think anything's different this year apart from the fact that I'm stitching on something different. So because this is so big and so easy to stitch on, I pull a strand or two and literally I get like a, a big chunk completed, which then gives me the satisfaction. But I've only actually stitched for maybe, I don't know, half an hour, half an hour, an hour. And yeah, absolutely love people. Um, the design itself, um, the way that it's designed, it's the first time. It's the first time that I've ever had a chart where it's charted in such a way that it gives you all of the detailed stitches on the insides and it gives you like an outline stitch but then it doesn't give you the fill-in stitches so it looks for all intents and purposes when you look at the chart that sort of the center section so this center section here which is green it had like the line around the outside and it had the detailed stitches in the middle and then everything else was blank and I was like oh that's strange but when I read the instructions it was like well no it gives you the okay well fill the shirt in with this color and fill the pants in with this color so at first it was a bit you think oh that's pretty straightforward but if the only thing you've ever seen is a chart that is you know every square has a symbol in it it was really odd to sort of wrap my head around it but now that I have it's totally fine but it just goes to show you what you get used to I was just like oh oh I'm not quite sure oh what what am I doing now because I was sitting there thinking I really don't want to do this wrong I really don't want to do this wrong and luckily for me I haven't done anything wrong as yet she says famous last words right famous last words there we go just so it's it's all new. So it's 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 a huge camp fabric. It's huge lengths of pearl cotton, which are just yeah, a joy to stitch with. Um, the linen, the eighteen count linen. I mean, it's just it's so big. It's so big, but I'm absolutely loving it. It is just, yeah. I have a sneaky suspicion that I think if someone gave me a choice at the moment, because I'm getting so into this, I mean, I say this now, this could all change, of course. I could sit there going, oh, I'm so into this. And then all of a sudden I'm like, no, I want to I wanna switch out. I'm bored now. I've done enough of this. But at the moment, I feel like, I feel like I want to get some more of these so that I can stitch them up, especially at this time of year, because it's just the way I am. At this time of year, I'm one of those people that I don't really stitch that much because it's too hot to be indoors. I only get a few hours here and there because I'm either at work or I'm doing gardening or I'm having to go out and water the garden. The girls have to go out for a walk much later in the evenings because it's too hot to take them out. So... I tend to find that the whole sitting down and stitching like I normally would when it's cold and wet or miserable outside, it doesn't tend to happen because there's always something else for me to do. I mean, just going out and watering the garden, you know, there's there's another sort of hour gone. And that's without sort of worrying about doing the front garden, um, the greenhouse. So, yeah, it's this this is perfect because I can do a bit but I get, I feel like that I, that I get the satisfaction that although I've only spent half an hour or an hour stitching, I can really see that I've spent an hour or half an hour's worth of stitching because it, you can cover so much ground. <laughs> it makes me not want to go back to stitching on, on the small accounts now. I mean, I say that I, I love, I love all my other projects, but at the moment I'm just obsessed with this and it is obsessed it's not even it's not even oh well you know I'm really you know I'm I'm really liking working on this so I'll work on this for another day or so I'm like I have to get this finished I have, and I don't know whether that's maybe the reason why because because 
I have it in my mind that this is a present and I can't afford to sort of stop and then not pull it out for for weeks, months, because I have to have it done. So the plan for this one is I need to have this finished before the September retreat because I have someone that is kindly and very generously agreed to turn it into the stocking for me. I mean, I'm more than happy to sit and stitch it, but my my finishing skills as far as sewing and quilting and those sorts of things I don't think I don't think I'm at the right level to be able to necessarily get this completely finished as a stocking by one's fair hand because I think I would I would be worried in case I ruined it or I did something wrong I mean I know that you can't really ruin it but the fact that this is this is basically a leaving present for my boss who I've worked with for eight years in my current role um he absolutely loves Christmas he's, he's honestly he's Christmas mad for a group for a, you know for, for basically a man of retirement age he loves Christmas and he loves all the decorations and he loves he loves all that sort of thing so I thought well you know I was sitting there trying to find you know a masculine pattern to do as a leaving present and I thought what am I doing he's leaving towards the end of the year anyway the fact that I know he's, he's an absolute sucker for Christmas I was like a Christmas stocking with his name on is just like the perfect present especially since as see the difference is David is um what can I say? He's slightly different because for the sort of man that he is, you would never expect it. But he does actually dabble with a bit of knitting himself. I think he does it to sort of relax. Um, and he kindly once knitted me a scarf, which is um, like a wool scarf. And it's such a lovely scarf, but it's so thick. You can only wear it in the depths of winter. And then I tend to use that that scarf when I go out and walk the dogs because normally that's freezing cold at like eight, nine o'clock at night when I'm taking the girls out for their walk after I've got back from work. So so yeah, the fact that that he does he does knit himself, he has an understanding or at least an appreciation for the sort of work that goes into something. So, you know, like with some people they sort of say, you know, do you ever feel that people really appreciate what it is that you've stitched for them or what you know especially if you've done it as a gift or you've you've done you know Christmassy type things you know some people say to me you know do you not worry that they're just like oh yeah and don't really appreciate what's gone into it with someone like David I think he would appreciate how much has gone into it because he does knitting so he knows that you can spend hours knitting something. I mean, I don't think he ventures much, much outside of scarves. He keeps it nice and simple because I think for him it's more the process, the relaxation of, of, of knitting. So, but I don't think there's ever anything that I've given him that he hasn't been really appreciative of the fact that it's a handmade gift for him. Or, and his wife because um, I've done some berries for them obviously I'm doing his stocking for his for his leaving his little leaving present or retirement present and then I think I will probably if if time allows <laughs> the plan is that I would like to also do him and his wife the usual Christmas Christmas gift like a his and hers version of something for the last time and send it up to him in the post at Christmas time but with the fact that you know I like to make I like to make little presents and little ornamental things as Christmas gifts for the people that I work with um, 
but there seems to be more and more of them. <laughs> so then it's a case of, well, how do I how do I get all of this stitching done for these presents, as well as getting all of my other things touched on? Well, you know, because many a time there I am, November and early December, stitching like a mad person because I'm sort of up against the clock. So I'm rather hoping that I've started my Christmas stitching, or at least that's what I'm trying to tell myself. I'm trying to make it so that if I can get this stocking done, I think this is why I'm sort of gunning to get this one done. I think because in, in my eyes, I'm like, well, if I can get this stocking done, I know it's done. I don't need to worry about it not being done in time for September. The plan for me, I think, is to do Christmas in July anyway. So with the fact that I'm planning on a Christmas in July, that potentially should be another lot of stitching. Admittedly, I don't think it will be anything as big as this, she says. But it's famous last words. Who knows? That that. I could have one idea and actually it turned into something completely and utterly different. Um, but the plan is that I would like to sort of get a lot of stitching done in July for Christmas gifts, even if I don't get the finishing done. As long as the stitching is done so that I can, I can finish at leisure, so to speak. And ideally, I think I would like it so that I can finish... I can do like what I call bulk finishing <laughs> so that I can get lots and lots of little different bits and pieces stitched up and then have a weekend or a couple of weekends where I just sit there doing finishing. I think that's that's how I'm thinking. But then I'm sitting here saying all that and I'm like, well, all the time that I'm doing all this Christmas stitching and gift stitching, I'm not going to be stitching much of anything else because I mean admittedly a lot of like the the Christmassy stuff I'll probably stitch whilst I'm on the train because they're more on Small's side but then the problem is when I get home and then ideally I should be pulling out one of my actual bigger projects whether that be you know a fancy lady a full coverage, a sampler. I'm tending to just carry on because because it's just there. I'm tending to carry on with something that's still rel relatively small. So I'm I'm going to have to sort of figure this out. But one thing that I have figured out, and it doesn't take a genius to work this out, is that my whip go for June is 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 over it's it's it didn't even start so i now need to try and think of how i'm gonna how i'm gonna pull it back now i would love to say that july i'll pull it back so a bit like when i was on holiday and i didn't stitch all the things in february and march that it called for in april i then basically played catch up and done all of the stitching that i was supposed to have done in february and march in my may along with may um, I'm still undecided of where I'm going with that because June, July and the very first bit of August is normally when we have the best of our weather which then means that I'm normally in the garden because it's so warm or at least doing gardening because the garden is taking off now I would love to say that I will you know I will stitch June's backlog of Whipgo in maybe July or August once I've got this completed, but I just don't see it happening. And it's not that I'm going to sit here and really get that hooked up on the fact that I haven't completed my Whipgo, but my plan is to stay on track with Whipgo this year. You know, one way, shape or form, I need to have completed all the, all the requirements but I don't necessarily need to do them on the month that they were called. And I think that's that's how I'm going to have to roll, at least for June, July and August. 
I mean, and then I've got September, October, November and December to play catch up on all the days. And admittedly, the way that I've done my my whip go this year is I have got two boards, one's for full coverage and one's for everything else. But I don't think anything gets nothing. Everything that's on there is nothing more than nothing more than I don't know three days worth of stitching I don't think there's any five days on there I think it's three days of this and three days of that and it's all theme based so I'm like you know what I'm not going to worry about it I'm not going to see it as failure I'm not going to sit here and say well that's it whip goes over because it's it's so not it just means that I will need to pick other months to cover the numbers called but at least I've got an aim so I don't think it ruins anything I just don't think I'm following along like everyone else does and that's fine because I have to I have to work with what works for me um, and that is what works for me to just sort of as long as I know what I've still got outstanding to to complete on the whip go I can then do it as and when just as long as it's done by the end of the year because that way i can say i did complete what i what i set out to complete but it just goes to show you you can have as much planning as you like if if something really calls to you and something really is just saying don't put me down don't put me down because we're having so much fun um I'm not going to sit there and be like, no, I need to put this one away because I need to stitch on something else. Because when I have tried to do that in the past, because, you know, whip go says I should, I tend to find that I'm like, although I'll pull it out and I'll stitch on it, I don't have the enthusiasm. I don't have the enthusiasm that I should have. So then if there's evenings where I'm a bit tired... Whereas with this, even if I'm tired, I'm like, I don't care how tired I am. I just want to put one more strand in, even if it's one. Um, with other projects that I've sort of forced myself to switch out to, I tend to find that on the nights that I'm not really feeling it, I don't, I don't sort of say one more strand. Just, just stick a strand in, just for tonight. So it just goes to show you how much you are drawn to things, especially me. So I'm like, well, if if everything about this is saying, stitch me, stitch me, stitch me, I have to. I have to just go with my, go with what's really screaming at me. And like I say, I mean, I've never, I've never stitched on something solely like this or been that drawn to it, apart from back way back when... <laughs> <laughs> when I first started stitching and I was stitching on my Faces of Fury but I only had one project then I was a monogamous stitcher when I first started so yeah I mean that's how long it's been since I've been this this devoted if you like to one project but I mean the way it's going I don't think it's going to take me very long at all to have this done. At least my portion of it. And then it can it can go off to to my very gorgeous friend who has very very kindly and generously agreed to turn it into an actual usable stocking. Cuz that's 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 a scary thought. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure she would sit there and say, "Oh, you know, it's it's not as it's not as complicated as you might think." Yeah, I'm not sure I'd want to actually turn my hand to actually doing the finishing of this. Not because I wouldn't give it a go, but not when I know that this is a gift and, and particularly a retirement gift for my boss. If it was the sort of thing where I was stitching it and then I thought, well, if I finish it, I can either gift it or I can keep it. I don't think the pressure would be quite so bad because it'd be like, well, if it doesn't turn out well, it doesn't matter because I'll just keep it and there's absolutely nothing in my world that needs to be that perfect I'm like I could I you know I just see it as unique at that point but the fact that this is 
this is being stitched for the purpose that it is. I'm like, no, you, I cannot afford to make make a mistake with this, or or ruin it, or or at least not make it look the best that it can look. So I'll accept that the stitching bit, stitching bit, I can do. The finishing of it, this this retirement gift is not is not the time to give it a go. But that said, I am very keen at this at this particular moment in time. I am very keen to stitch up another one of these with no intentions of gifting it and see how I get on with it because. I do think it's sort of doable. Hold on, I'm just working out where I am. Where are we? Oh, that's it. I do think that it's doable and that I'm quite capable of stitching the stocking and then turning it into some sort of stocking. Um, I'm just... Not, not for this one. But I'm totally sure that it's doable. Right, hold on. I'm just working out where I am. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to unpick that because... It just doesn't seem right to me. The only thing with this, this pattern is one thing I have noticed is this side doesn't seem to match this side. But when I've checked the chart, that is how it's charted. It's not charted to, to match. It seems a little odd, but, you know, I'll work the process. That's how it's charted. It's charted that way for a reason. So let me see if I can um, come from this for another way so that I know exactly what I'm filling in. We don't want to go wrong now just because I'm sitting here chatting to you when I've been doing so, so well with it until now. Okay, so let's chuck him back down there. Now, let me see if I can fathom this out. So according to the chart, if I do that one, that one, and then this one, now I know I'm going backwards. <laughs> and then this one. And then this one. No, I was in the right space. See, it just goes to show you, even when you're looking at it, sometimes it just doesn't look quite right. But in actual fact, you was doing everything right the first time. There we go. Now you can see how I navigate myself around. It's it's like logic rather than counting. Sometimes I can't see the pattern as clearly as, as, as I should until after I've stitched it. And I'm like, oh, how could I not see that when I was stitching it? But that's that's me. That is so me. The process of elimination rather than, you know, just look at the chart. Now, see, I'm, I know what you're all thinking. Trees, are you sure that's right? Because it doesn't match the other side. Because I'm of the same opinion here. But this is how it's charted. So, I have checked. I suppose if you're looking, with, if you're looking at someone with their, with their pants, well, I suppose it must be because that's, that's his bottom, maybe. Maybe that's why it looks different. I don't know. But please don't think I've gone wrong because I have rechecked this this chart a number of times when I was working the navy and the and the dark the darker pink and I checked and rechecked and this is what it says I should be doing so I am following it to the letter which is also strange for me because normally I don't if it doesn't look right I'll change it. We are not we are not doing that with this. But yeah, so like I say, nothing else has been stitched on. 
just this. The weather has been glorious. The girls have, yeah, the girls have struggled. The girls have struggled in the heat. They're far, I mean, bonbons are all, li believe it or not, this is the bit that makes me laugh. So Bonnie has got the longest fur and for all intents and purposes, looks like the fluffiest one out of the two of them. But she's got like wispy fur. So her fur is really wispy. Honey, on the other hand, has got much shorter fur, but hers is much denser. She looks like, just like she's got like a really thick coat. So out of the two of them, Honey's the one that's been really struggling in this heat. So wherever possible, she's been diving back indoors with the air conditioning. So at night times, I've been putting the air conditioning on upstairs. And then when Lauren is in her bedroom, and working she's got air conditioning in her office and in her bedroom um, so the girls just disappear there's absolutely no point in putting air conditioning in my living room because my living room basically is one whole wall of glass which is south facing so and y you have the, the doors all the doors slid open so my husband when I turned around and said to my husband we need air conditioning in the living room he said it's a bit pointless he was like, because unless you're going to go outside, he said, and close all the doors. He said, it's not going to work. And I sort of see his point because we just sort of like slide all the bifolds all the way back and then just leave, leave it open. As well as we have like an atrium. So we have like a glass roof in the living room, which is, I think, four meters by two meters. I mean, there are some sails up to, to shade at this time of year. But even so. I tend to find that I sort of agree with him. But if this temperature keeps up, if we keep getting this sort of heat year on year, I don't think we're going to have a choice because it's like, it's not even during the daytime that's the problem. It's the evenings. Or, you know, like sometimes when you're sort of done with the sun, you want to go indoors and you want to watch a bit of telly. I don't always want to go upstairs and lay on my bed in the air con. Sometimes I want to sit on the sofa. So, so yeah, so maybe, maybe I'll work my manage, magic on him. But in all fairness, it's not very easy. The space that, because I've got a utility room on, that backs onto it, the only place where the aircon unit could go, it would be a bit tricky to get, to get it plumbed in. So we may have to, may have to figure a way out, but. The more I think about it, the more it makes sense. But then I'm like, well, it's not going to get, it's not going to get the sort of use that an air conditioning unit gets, say, in the States. We don't have it on for months and months and months. It just doesn't require it over here. But at the moment, we are finding that our temperatures are creeping up. And the, the number of days that we're having these high temperatures seems to be increasing. So... So yeah, I think, I think over time it will become a necessity. But right now, I don't, I don't know if I could justify the cost and the hassle of having to destroy yet more to get an aircon unit in there to then have to redecorate. I mean, that said, we need to redecorate downstairs anyway because where we done the upstairs conversion... As part of that, all the dust and the muck and the punching holes in ceilings for staircases and the likes, the whole downstairs needs redecorating and like refreshing up. I really don't like my my flooring in the living room. Well, say the living room. The problem is I've got a big open plan room, which is like a living room, dining room, kitchen and hallway. Um, is all open plan. And the problem with that is the cost and the hassle to lift the tiles up and put new tiles down is not for the faint-hearted. It is not for the faint-hearted. So although we really, really want to do it, and it's not just me, my husband agrees, the cost and the time that it's going to take to do it, neither of us are really sort of in that much of a rush <laughs> because it's just that, oh, no. Oh, I've just messed that up now. Look, I've just put a knot in that. Okay, let's try this again. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, it's it's a little pin stitch. 
So this is how I start and end my threads on this because I can. So I just do a little pin stitch to get the get everything hooked in. And then I do my cross over the top. Oh my god. Not going very well, people, is it? Have I just pulled it out again? I have. <laughs> right. It's because I keep getting the thread hooked up on the handle of my stand here. And then every time I pull it, it pulls the it pulls the bottom out. Okay, let's try this again, people. Keeping it real, keeping it real on this channel. You're seeing it with waltz and all. Okay, we're there, we're there. Okay, and we've just got it caught again. That's it. Okay, so there's the little pin stitch. So it's all anchored in. And then we can get back to the stitching. So yeah, like I was saying, the house does actually need redecorating. And I did sort of say to Darren, oh, maybe we should do a little bit sort of where we had a couple of weekends free. He wasn't racing and the likes. But in all fairness, um, the good weather turned up and we was like, shall we do the inside? Do you reckon we should paint indoors? And I was like, no, let's go out and paint the deck instead. So we went outside and we'd done deck painting instead. Um, so I think we're going to leave it until the winter months before we start considering doing any decorating indoors. And even then, I have a sneaky suspicion that because of the cost implication and the fact that we would need to literally spend weeks chipping the tiles up off the floor, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to convince him to lift all the tiles up so that we can lay new tiles down because it's not a straightforward case of just lift the tiles up and you're done you have to lift the tiles up and then chip all of the old adhesive off the floor before you can lay the next the next one down and yeah and the problem for us as well is because we live in an older house our house is built where since we've done the conversion, we've got some floor which is a solid slab floor, which is going to be the biggest, the hardest bit to get it off because it's a slab of concrete that adhesive's attached to. And then we've got other areas of the house that are like on a, they're on like a suspended floor, which is like a hardboard. That would be much easier to get up. So, yeah, the joys, people, of owning a house and all that goes with it. Okay, so we've finished, we've finished this bit here. I've just looked at my clock. I was sitting there thinking I'll do an hour's worth of stitching and just realised that I've actually done... It's took me a little bit longer to do that. So I think I'm going to call it here, people. Um, what can I say? Like I said, yeah, I, I, I am thoroughly enjoying myself here. Um, fingers crossed. The, the, I think the plan is that Darren is away the coming weekend and I think, if I'm not mistaken... The weather is not supposed to be overly sunny and overly hot this weekend. So if that's the case, I will try and do a monthly update. It's probably likely to be the smallest monthly update you've ever seen in your life because I'm not really going to have that much to show you. Um, but I'm going to play it by ear and I'm going to see how I go. And yeah, I, th I think I'll just be continuing working on this because I'm having an absolute ball, people. So I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me and I have thoroughly enjoyed telling you how much I'm loving stitching on this, this lovely design. And yeah, I can't wait to have it looking like that, like an actual stocking, look at that. I mean, I've pretty much got, how much have we got done? So I've got sort of from here, and we've just done this bit here. So I've just got, I'm, I've, I've got some of this, and then literally it's gonna be, you know, do these bits and pieces, the reindeers, the bit at the top and his name, and, whatever these are up here and I think I'm done so yeah there was me saying that I'm really gonna have to push myself to focus on it and I really didn't need to because it's naturally happening of its own accord so on that note people I'm gonna 
bid you all farewell and hope you're all having a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you, fingers crossed, at least do the video at some point over the weekend um, to give you an update and you'll see, you'll see how far I get. So have a lovely week all, thank you for hanging out with me and bye bye for now.